Hello everyone and welcome back. This video is going to be the only one for this entire week because this entire week is going to be all about working on your front end capstone. The front end capstone is basically just what it sounds like. It is a really the first time that I'm taking most of the training wheels off and you are going to be creating your own application from scratch. I'm going to still have a little bit of structure to it unless you kind of go out from there. So here's the quick summary. You're going to be creating a single page to-do list web application using the skills you've obtained. It should incorporate HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, obviously. It should be responsive. In other words, it doesn't matter how big the window is. And it should look professional. I'm not look, talking about super amazing design, but it should look good enough that you would want that you would show it to somebody and say, hey, look at this awesome thing I made. This is the type of thing you could put on a portfolio for job interviews. You're allowed to use whatever libraries and frameworks you want. We haven't really talked about libraries and frameworks other than just in passing, such as jQuery or Lodash or things like that. You are welcome to use the ones you want if you if you so desire, but keep it lightweight. It should be less than 150k in total size, so make sure you use minified versions if you're using any libraries or frameworks. I retain the right to deny any libraries or frameworks that do large portions of the work for you. Don't try and get around this and saying, haha, I found this library that all I have to do is push a few buttons and it gives me a to-do app. Obviously that will not fly. The vast majority of this of the code and everything needs to be yours. You are what you're able and encouraged to use jQuery or Lodash or whatever you like, but if it's something that does all the work for you or does a large portion of the work for you, you're going to have to start over. I'm just saying, nope. Your application must meet the following user stories. Now, if you've never heard of user stories before, they're basically requirements or features, but they're told in a way from the user's point of view. This is, if you're not familiar with agile software development, it's kind of part of agile is where it really came from. Um, we're not going to get into agile and all the debate surrounding that, but just this is things that users can do. I can add items to a list by typing them into a text field and pressing the enter or return key. In other words, you need to add that feature. You need to have a text field, and you need to have the user be able to add them by pressing the enter return key, not just clicking on a button. The field to add items should be hidden by default and can be toggled on and off by pressing on an icon or button. I can mark items as completed by clicking on them, which shows a visual representation that they're complete. For example, they might be marked through, you might color them a different color, whatever you want to do, listen to your heart. I can remove items from the list by clicking on an icon, which should only be visible when the mouse only be visible only, which should be visible, let me update that, which should be visible only when the mouse is hovering over the item. The item should be displayed in an easy to understand format. The web page should be visually attractive and professional looking. The file should be split among directories in a logical manner. Here is your folder structure. You have to adhere to this folder structure. We'll talk about that in a second. The code should be well commented so that anyone can tell what it does relatively easily. Remember, I'm going to be looking at your code, so I want you to comment it so that I can actually understand it and realize that it's not a bunch of spaghetti. Folder structure. The file as an example is a good folder structure. For this project, you are required to adhere to this folder structure. In other words, you must have this folder structure just like it is. Later on, you can customize it to your needs, but this is a good starting point, and this is the one you are required to do for this assignment. I have both kind of a textual representation as well as a picture of what it would look like in Atom. You have a root folder. Inside of that you have assets and the only thing that is a sibling of assets is index. You'll notice you have assets here and you have index on the same level. Everything else in, is inside of assets. Inside of assets you have two folders, CSS and JS. Inside of CSS you have your index.css and whatever other libraries you want. If you want, if you want to include a CSS library like Bootstrap, that's fine. Your JavaScript is the other folder. Inside of there, you have a libraries folder if you're going to have other libraries. For example, if you have jQuery or Lodash or something else, you could put them in the libraries folder. If you don't have any other libraries, don't put this lib folder in there. And then you have index as a sibling of that. So you have JavaScript folder. Inside of there, you could have the library folder, but you have the index.js folder. I have created an example of what this could look like. See the demo, demo video here. This is just going to be a link to this video because I'm about to show you the demo. Here's the demo. This is my to-do list, and I'm going to put that there and put this here so we can talk about the user stories. I can add items to the list by typing them into a text field and pressing the enter or return key. Now I've refreshed the page so you can see that that little list isn't, all, isn't there by default. I click that button, and now I have a list. Do the thing. Enter. There it goes. It's been added to the list. So that first one, done. I the field to add items should be hidden by default, can be toggled on and off. So let me refresh the page. This can be toggled on and off by clicking on this little plus button. I can mark items as completed by clicking on them. Click. There it's marked through, marked through. Or if I click it again, it goes away. 
I can remove items from the list by clicking on an icon which should only be visible when the mouse hovers over the item. So you saw that there as I hover the item the X shows up. If I click that it goes away. If I click that it goes away. The item should be displayed in an easy to understand format. You can tell exactly what, what these are. They're right next to each other. Web page should be visually attractive and professional looking. This isn't the most beautiful website I've ever seen, but the colors complement each other. It looks decent. The file should be split among directories in a logical manner. I followed this file format. The code should be well commented so that anyone can tell what it is. I promise the code is commented, but you don't get to see it because that would be cheating. So here's the example. You'll notice, by the way, this is responsive. I can make it big, I can make it small, and it still works. If I click the plus, that takes up the entire thing. Doesn't matter how big it is. That is your capstone. Here is your rubric for that capstone. I'm a huge fan of rubrics because they make grading and assignments much easier for everyone because number one, it makes it easy for me to grade because I just walk down the list, but it makes it a lot easier for you as the student because you know exactly what I'm looking for. So you see there are several different elements to this rubric. The HTML needs to be well structured and easy to read with no extra elements and no tag orphans. When we're talking about tag orphans, we're talking about tags that don't close. Those lead to problems. Sometimes browsers will fix them, sometimes not. So make sure you close all your tags. Don't have any extra elements. Don't have divs thrown in there for no reason. Keep your tags to the smallest amount possible. Make sure it's well structured and easy to read. Do your indentation, all that stuff. Same thing with your CSS. Make sure it's well-structured, organized, and concise. When I talk about well-structured, I'm meaning that you choose selectors well. You don't have a bunch of redundant selectors, things like that. When it's organized, I'm talking about it. I want it to be indented well. I want it to be organized in a way that I can understand. I personally follow kind of the, the element and then class and then index all those in alphabetical order. You don't have to follow that. There are a lot of other, way, other ways to organize it, but just make sure it is organized and not just thrown up there like a bunch of spaghetti. If you use a weird organization thing, you may want to put that at the top in a comment saying, hey, this is what I use, and explain it. Make sure it's concise. Don't have a bunch of extra stuff in there that you don't need. Selectors are well chosen without un redundant or unnecessary classes or IDs. Make sure you use all your classes and IDs. Make sure you're selecting well, that kind of stuff. Vanilla JavaScript. JavaScript is well written, following best practice in regards to structure, naming, etc. Functions are used to break code into meaningful chunks. If you remember from this, the videos last week, we spent a lot of our time taking our, our code and breaking it into functions and then um, calling those functions. Make sure you do that. Arrow functions are used unless there's a meaningful reason not to do so. So arrow functions should be your default unless you're doing something that needs a traditional function declaration, such as an event listener or maybe a main function or a function that you want to have at the bottom of your code for some reason, things like that. Make sure code is dry, you're not repeating yourself, and that it's easily readable. Your website should look and feel professional. Um, make sure that you choose colors well, your fonts, any transitions, your interactivity choices. Make sure it looks and feels good. Don't just pick random colors. Go find a good color palette if you're not a designer. There's a ton of them out there. You can find color palettes. Just, just Google them. Find a good font that matches with the theme you're going for, so on and so forth. Add transitions. Make it kind of fade in, fade out. If you look at mine, um, when you click the little plus button here, that little bar fades in and fades out. It doesn't instantly pop in and out. Stuff like that. Make sure you fulfill all the user stories. Those are those up here. Make sure you meet all of these requirements. Make sure you have comments. Don't have excessive comments. Don't comment every line or any mess like that, but add comments to make sure it's understandable. Make sure it's lightweight. The total size, including any libraries, is 150K. Um, that should be super simple for you to do, especially if you're using just the vanillas and not using any libraries. If you don't use any libraries, I cannot imagine how you could go anywhere close to 150K, unless you have a whole bunch of images or something like that. If you choose to use libraries, that's fine. Just make sure the total size is under 150 kilobytes. That includes any CDNs. So if you're going to use the Bootstrap CDN or jQuery CDN, I'm factoring that in, okay? So make sure that those are included. Make sure your website is responsive, and make sure you follow the folder structure. You have a conversion chart down here. This assignment is worth up to 200 points, and then you can see, you can see how many it's worth. So if you get all of the things, the max on all of them, you'll get 44 points, which translates to 200. If you get 43, it translates to 197. Those of you who are good at math are quickly realizing that, hey, I can lose a few points and it doesn't hurt too bad, but as you start to lose more and more points, it starts to really hurt. So I've weighted it in a way so that you can make a few mistakes without it really hurting, because I want you to succeed. I want you to do well. Um, that said, if you make a bunch of mistakes 
at some point they really start to catch up with you because the, the more mistakes you make, the more they hurt, if that makes any sense. As always, if you have any questions about any of this or anything else, please let me know and I'll be happy to help. Thanks. Thanks.